Hey everyone, Amos McFalls here. And before we hop into this incredible content, I wanted to take a second and let you know about a couple of things. First, if you hadn't had a chance to check out Destiny Leadership Institute, we believe that DLI is the best place to develop character, discover calling, and increase confidence all the while teaching you to operate within the culture of the organization in which you serve. DLI is completely online, which gives you the ability to study while you serve in the local church. If you or someone you know is interested in taking the next step in your leadership, Destiny Leadership Institute is the perfect solution. Also, each year Destiny Ministry hosts a conference for our entire Destiny family called The Gathering. This year, The Gathering will be held at Christ Church in West Monroe, Louisiana on June the 22nd through the 24th. We would love for you to join us there. Always remember that you can access any information about DLI, The Gathering, or anything else Destiny at destinyleaders.com. Hey everybody, my name is Jason Warman and I have the honor and privilege of leading a church in Venice, Florida called Coast Life Church. And I'm so glad that you're connecting in to this resource today because I, I believe that God's word is gonna help us get bigger, help us get better, come on and help us get stronger. I am so thankful that you're connecting into this destiny resource. You know, Heidi and I uh, were a part of destiny from the very beginning of our church. Destiny has been a part, an integral part of the foundation of our church and then has been family to us every step of the way for the past now 11 years. And I, I, I just say it this way, that Destiny is in an organization that I'm connected to. It's a, it's a family we belong to. And there are no better leaders on the planet. There are no better people on the planet than Dr. Phil and Kathy Brassfield. And I will fight you if you disagree with that statement because they are the absolute best people on the planet. And I am so excited and thankful to get to tag into uh, this series that we're in. And today I'm gonna be covering John chapter 9, 10, and 11. And I wanna talk about the words of Jesus, specifically John chapter 10. You know, the name of the church that I lead is called Coast Life Church. And it came out of this passage because I, I was just stuck on the fact that there were people who are living their lives, but missing out on the abundant life that Jesus came to bring. And so the name Coast Life came out of this passage. These are the words of Jesus. John chapter 10, verse 10 says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. It's the mission statement. It's what Jesus described as his own mission statement. And that is, he came to give us abundant life, to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. And I think it's important to understand that John chapter 10 is a response to a story that unfolds in John chapter 9. As you're reading John chapter 9, Jesus finds a man who is blind and and through an interesting series of events, Jesus spits on the ground, makes some mud and takes the clay and anoints the blind man's eyes and he's healed. And it just so happens that the day that he does this is the Sabbath day. And it sets the Pharisees off that Jesus had made this mud on the Sabbath day, uh, they're, they're furious. They, they call the man's parents in, they call the man in. They end up excommunicating this man from the synagogue because, they, because of the fact that he was healed by Jesus. And the Pharisees were the original cancel culture. The Pharisees were cancel culture before cancel culture was, was cool. They, they knew how to cancel people quick. And they, they, they lean into this, by the way, cancel culture is the height of self-righteousness because it doesn't give other people grace because it can see no wrong 
in ourselves. And I just wanna tell you, I don't believe cancel culture is kingdom culture. I believe God has called us to take a posture of grace, knowing at some point, we're probably gonna need grace ourselves because we recognize our own sin. Come on, we're able to give grace to other people's shortcomings and failings. That's the way of the kingdom of God is we're not taking the high road, we're taking the humble road, wanting to help everybody get to where God wants them to go and this man runs up against the, the height of self-righteousness, this blind man. He's excommunicated, cut off from Jewish life uh, that revolved around religion and the synagogue. And in response to this, Jesus is then going to teach John chapter 10 and he's gonna call out the Pharisees and he's gonna tell them that what you're looking at, that's not, what a, that's not what a real shepherd looks like. Jesus is gonna use the term good shepherd. Ezekiel in, in his prophetic book would have used the term the true shepherd. That's not what a true shepherd looks like. That's not what a good shepherd looks like. A good shepherd isn't trying to cut you off from your life. A good shepherd is trying to help you find and get to life. And Jesus is gonna say plainly in John chapter 10 that he is the good shepherd. And, and the book of John and it gives us three aspects of life. Two of them are found here in John 10 and John 11. One of them is found previously in the first chapter of John, but there's three aspects of life that Jesus brings to us. Number one, Jesus is the author of all life. That all, all life has its beginning in Jesus. All the way back in the, in the book of John, John chapter one, verses three and four, it says, all things were made through him, talking about Jesus. All things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And the Bible teaches us plainly that all things were made through Jesus. Paul picks it up and he says something very similar. He said, all things were made through him, by him, and all things were made for him. That Jesus is the author of life. And I think it's very important to pinpoint where life originates, to find, to find where it emanates from. And, and Jesus is the author of all life. And it's important to find the foundation of something. Because I believe right now people are recognizing that the world that we live in is broken. I think people are recognizing that even in their own humanity, that something's wrong, something's missing. And so everybody's looking for the fix. How do, how do I find the fix? And so right now in our, in our cur current climate, in our current culture, people are looking to politics, Maybe if we align with the right politics, we can find the fix. If we get a better form of government, if we change the way our government governs, then maybe we can find the fix. There's people right now that maybe are looking at social justice. If we can make things fair and equitous, maybe that can be the fix. But I'll just give you this. I believe the only way that we can fix it is to find the one that founded it. That if you're gonna get to the fix, you're gonna have to go to the founder. And outside of Jesus, there is no fix, that he is really the cornerstone, that outside of him, if he's not in the right place, if he's not the cornerstone, then everything else is gonna be out of alignment. It's gonna be unstable. It's not gonna have a healthy foundation. And it's so important to know who the originator of life is, because if you wanna fix it, you've gotta look at the one who founded it. Come on, tweet that or if you're not on Twitter, parlor that. I don't know what to say these days. Tweet, parlor, whatever. Just say this, if you wanna fix it, you've gotta find the one who founded it. And so many people are looking for another fix. And I wanna tell you, there's not another fix outside of Jesus because it's all by him, it's all through him, and it's all for him. And it doesn't make sense unless you put him in his rightful place. He is our founder. Come on, he's our alpha. He is our omega. He's the beginning and he's the end. He's the center and everything else is on the circumference. And I promise you that life begins to get better when Jesus is at the center. Jesus, number one, three aspects of life. Jesus, number one, is the founder, the author of all life. That life comes 
through Jesus that the one who founded it is the one who can fix it. And then Jesus is gonna take this idea of life in John chapter 10 and he's gonna expound on it. He, he's, gonna, he's gonna take this idea that life has come and, and begin to bring it to people in a way that we can understand it because I think people have a misconception about what life is. And I think sometimes people get confused when we say that Jesus came to bring, he came to bring life. And I, I believe that. And I believe many people, when I say that statement, would give me a hearty amen or at least a head nod. Yeah, Jesus came to bring life. But I think for some people, they, they hear that phrase and they think, man, I'm already living. Uh, I've got breath in my body. Uh, my, my heart's beating. I've got a pulse. I gotta be at work tomorrow. I, I'm, we got a vacation plan. I've got life, I'm, I'm, I'm living, but that's not what Jesus is going to expound on in John chapter 10. Because as you, as you read the Bible, you find out that there are, there are multiple words actually in the Greek that describe the word life, but there are two that are significant. In, in the Greek, and I'm not a Greek scholar, but I do have the ability to read Greek scholars, thankfully. Um, but in, in the Greek, there's one word that describes existence. And it's used to describe everything that is living and has existence. And so plants have existence. They're, they're living, but they only have existence. Animals are, are living, but they only have existence. People, us, many of us are living, but we only have existence. And then when Jesus begins to talk about the life that he wants to bring, I find it so interesting that he doesn't pull the word to say, hey, I wanna give you existence, although all existence comes out of Jesus. Everything was made by him, through him, for him. Jesus said, no, I didn't come to give you existence. I came to give you, and the Greek word is zoe. I came to give you zoe life. I came to give you a fulfilling life, a life that is full and overflowing. I came to give you an super abundance, an abundance of zoe life that where you've been is not all there is, that there is, there is more than to life than what you're experiencing, that there is a relationship with God that kind of puts things into perspective. There's a presence of God that you've been living in the world without, but I've come to give you the presence of God through a relationship with God and through the presence of God, I've come to bring joy and peace and hope and faith. I've come to bring the fulfillment of purpose, the revelation of calling and and anointing and the purpose of God for your life. You've been existing, but I've come to give you real and abundant life because Jesus is the restorer of abundant life because we see it in the garden. Adam and Eve had a relationship with God. They were full of purpose and calling. They, they were walking in dominion. They had all provision. They were at unity in their marriage. They were at peace with God. They were in a place of paradise honestly, and then sin comes in and sin comes in. And we know this, that sin came to take away life. And I think people get confused again, because Adam and Eve walk out of the garden. Humanity did not lose their existence. What we held on to was we held on to our existence, but what was lost in the garden, it wasn't our existence. What was lost in the garden was our Zoe life. It, it was the life that we have in God. It was the life of being able to enjoy the presence of God, the power of God, the, the peace of God, the joy of God. And Jesus, number two, is the restorer of abundant life because what was lost in the garden, Jesus said, I came, there is a thief. He wants to still kill and destroy, but I've come so that you wouldn't just muddle through this life in existence. Existence. I've come that you might have life, come on somebody, and have it more abundantly. And we get into trouble when we don't define what's existence and we don't define and know the difference between what's existence and what's life. A few years ago, I got up really early in the morning and uh, went first thing to the coffee maker uh, to get that sweet nectar that gives us life. And I started making my coffee and my wife has these little containers, they're really cool and they hold our, our sweetener in, in them that, that we use. And I'm not gonna say what kind of sweetener it is because you'll email me or 
text me and tell me how bad it is for me. And so I'm just not gonna open that door. Do y'all, do y'all remember when people used to keep opinions to themselves? Me neither. <laughs> let's, let's make it a new thing. Uh, so I'm not gonna tell you what kind of sweetener it was, but I, I used the last of the sweetener out of the container. And so being the amazing husband, the incredible husband that I am, I know that my wife's gonna be coming to make some coffee in a few minutes and I don't wanna leave the container empty. So I, I had, it was early, I hadn't turned on any lights in the house, it was dark. I reach into the pantry, I grab something that I think is sweetener in, in my sleepy, darkened state and I fill the container up with something and I put it back in the pantry and I go enjoy my coffee. A little while later, I hear my wife saying, this just doesn't taste right. And she's sitting at the container and she's scooping more and more sweetener into her coffee. And it's just getting worse and worse and worse. And it's not getting better and better and better. It's because she was scooping something that she thought was one thing, but it was actually another. And I think many people are, are living their life, watch this, they're scooping out of existence thinking that it's gonna make things better, not realizing that they're not getting the life they want out of the existence. And so they scoop out of a relationship, thinking that a relationship is going to fulfill them, thinking a relationship is gonna make them happy, thinking a relationship is gonna make them affirmed and feel accepted. And so they scoop out of one relationship and then they scoop out of another relationship and we, get, we just keep scooping and all we're doing is getting more and more existence, but we're never getting the life we want. People do it with success. Like maybe if I hit this level or if I hit another level that is finally gonna take me to the place that I wanna be or people do it with uh, trips right now. People, people idolize vacations and, and man if I could go to the Mediterranean if I could take a Caribbean vacation if I could take a cruise and all of a sudden my, my worries would be gone and they take a scoop of that but they find out that at the end of it it just keeps getting more and more bitter and what they don't realize is they're scooping out of existence trying to get what's only in Jesus and when you realize that Jesus is the restorer of life, then all of a sudden you're not trying to scoop out of your marriage and get joy out of your marriage when joy was never intended to come from your marriage. It was intended to come from Jesus, the author of life. He's the one that came to give you joy. And then instead of trying to scoop joy out of your marriage, come on, you're pulling joy out of Jesus and you're able to bring joy into your marriage. And we've got to identify it all came from Jesus and there's no life outside of Jesus that Jesus didn't come to give us more existence. We've got existence. We can go to work. We can make money. We can have relationships. Jesus came to bring us the Zoe life that's missing so that we can pull heaven down to our earth so that we can take what God originated in the garden, come on, and bring it into our lives. Jesus is the restorer of abundant life. And then John chapter 11 Jesus gives us the third aspect of life that I wanna give you. He's gonna go and he's gonna raise his friend Lazarus from the dead. And he makes one of his I am statements in John chapter 11. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Here's the third aspect. Jesus is the source of resurrection life. Jesus came to help us overcome the thief, to stop killing, stop stealing, stop destroying the life that God has for us, to, to bring restoration life, to bring resurrected life. In other words, that I can hold this life loosely because I've got a whole life to come that, that I'm, I'm not waiting for eternity to begin. Come on, if I'm in Christ, eternity's already begun. And I hope it puts some real world, real world application in your life that maybe if you have a bad week, it's okay. It was just a week. You've got a whole eternity of life to come in Jesus. Come on, maybe you had a bad year. Maybe you had a bad decade and I'm sorry it happened. But can I tell you that that's just a small little blip on what Jesus, 
Jesus has come to bring because he is the resurrection and the life. Though we die, we're gonna live in him. That Jesus is the author and the beginning of all life. That he's the one that restores abundant life. He brings what was lost in this world. He brings it into our existence. And then he gives us the confidence to know that this life isn't all there is, that I'm gonna enjoy, come on, I'm gonna enjoy life on top of life on top of life. There was a rapper who one time wrote lyrics about having so much money. He had stacks on top of stacks on top of stacks. And I just wanna encourage somebody right now to realize that if you're in Christ, that you've got, come on, you've got life on top of life, on top of life. He was the beginning. He's the abundant life now. He's the eternal life for all time. Jesus is our shepherd. He didn't come to kick us out. Come on, he came to be the way to get us in to the life that God designed for us. And I I pray, man, I pray that the word of God is helping you today be bigger, be better, and be stronger In Jesus' name. Come on, I want to pray for you. Father, I pray for every person that's being a student of your word right now. I pray they'd find life in the word of God. I pray that they would be reminded of who they are in Christ. I pray that they would fix their focus on our founder, (laughs) fix their eyes on Jesus. Jesus, I pray that they would look to you for abundant life, that in every relationship, in in every aspect of life and our work and our vocation. We're not trying to pull out of those things that don't bring what only you can bring, Jesus, but we'll pull out of you and we'll bring you into all of those things. And then Father, I pray we'll walk with some confidence knowing that a bad day doesn't shake us because we got eternity to enjoy the goodness of God. And we give you praise for it. And if you've received that word, come on. Everybody said a great big amen. Love you guys.